Hey, I'm Kai from Flamenco Explained. In this video, we're gonna look at the most important, very first scale you really need to know to play flamenco, right? This is one of those things you just have to know. If you're into flamenco, you either know this or you need to know this. And if you don't know it yet, we're gonna get into it. So this is E Phrygian, right? The scale that we play when we're playing por arriba. Por arriba is the key that we play solea in. And it is also the most iconic thing in flamenco, right? You play this chord in this scale, and everyone knows we're talking about flamenco, right? This is just sort of iconic flamenco stuff, but it's also the foundation of a lot of stuff you're gonna be doing. So you need to know the scale, you need to know these notes, you need to know why and how this kind of works to form the foundation of so much of what you're gonna play in flamenco. If you're into this kind of stuff and you want to learn more about flamenco, check out Flamenco Explained. We have over 800 videos covering everything from the very beginning to some really advanced stuff. Um, and it's pretty comprehensive what we have over there. So check out flamencoexplained.com. The key that we're in, keys are a little funny in flamenco, but we call this por arriba, right? And it basically just means this key, right? So solea is the most obvious thing that we play por arriba. We play fandangos, a lot of things can be played por arriba, but solea is really the most important one. And the basic chord progression, which you're probably familiar with, right? But I get a lot of questions about the scale. So we're just gonna take a look at the scale. We're gonna start at the sixth string, and we're gonna play open, first fret, third fret. And then on the fifth string, we're gonna play open, second fret, third fret. Fourth string, we're gonna play open, second fret, third fret. On the third string, we're gonna play it open, and then we're gonna play the second fret. That's it, just two notes there. On the second string, we're gonna play open, first fret, third fret. On the first string, same thing, open, first fret, third fret. So the first thing I would do is get used to this pattern. Once that's really familiar, try it backwards. Right? Doesn't matter what you do with the right hand for now because you are trying to learn these notes. That's what matters here, right? So if your thumb is easier, if picado or free strokes, doesn't really matter, right? So just get these notes. For those of you that care, the notes are E, F, G, a, B, C, D, E. Here's a pattern coming. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back. Right, so the first thing you wanna do is just get to know this scale. Play it forwards and backwards, right? You can have a lot of fun with different patterns within the scale, but don't worry about that yet. Now, I'm gonna throw one more note at you, which is this one. Why? Why not? Reach with the pinky, and then come back. Right? Now, a couple things about the scale. A scale, generally, we talk about scales and scale patterns, right? A scale is a set of notes. Right? In this case, the notes are E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. Right? And then that repeats E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then I can keep going E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Right? It's all the same scale. That's like a theory idea. Uh, is that these notes, these seven notes, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and then we say seven because we think of the eighth note, but it's just another E, right? So the letter names, uh, doesn't matter what register, if it's E or E or E or E, it's the same note, it's an E. So a scale pattern, the way we learn it, a lot of time repeats a lot of the notes. And that's what's going on here, right? We have one octave, and then we have another octave, and then we could have more. And in a lot of 
cases, what happens on the guitar, because we don't want to move, is we play whatever other notes are in the scale we can grab without moving, right? So you saw that I can do a whole other octave by doing this. But maybe I don't want to move around. Maybe I want to stay here, so. There's an E, so that's two octaves. But these notes are grabbable, right? I can play those notes without really going anywhere. So when I learn my scale pattern, I'm going to learn those notes also as part of it. Kind of fun, I think, to know that it's, okay, first octave, second octave, some extra notes that are all part of this scale, right? And that all makes up this scale pattern. In a later video, we'll look at moving this scale pattern, but we're not gonna do that now. We're playing this scale in what we call open position. And open position means that we're including open strings, right? The first string, you know, every string. Every open string gets played in this scale. And that's, on the one hand, that's convenient. On the other hand, that makes this not a movable scale pattern, right? If I want to play this basic idea, I have to do other fingers if I want to move it, right? So if I'm going to play it somewhere else, I can kind of do that. We'll get into this in a later video, but here we're in open position, which means open strings are involved. And it also means that we're basically assigning each finger to a fret. Right? First finger, first fret, second finger, second fret, third finger, etc. Except you notice that when we get, we have to kind of reach out with our pinky here. But everything else, it's, you know, first, second, third fret finger correspond, right? And that, we call that playing in position. Even if we're in open position, the fact that we're not moving our hand, but we're staying here is kind of important. So I would really make a point of using the fingers that I'm using in my left hand, which are index, middle, middle ring, middle ring, middle, index ring, index ring, right? Don't use other fingers or it gets really hard to learn the scale. So this is your introduction, learn the scale. We'll have more on this topic coming up, but for now, if this is new to you, what you want to do is just spend a lot of time getting to know these notes. You can play them in any order you want once you get to know them. We'll get into that again later. But for now, just learn this scale. It's a great first step in getting to know scales.